everybody. Welcome back to Greater Day Cafe. I am so glad that you're watching. Listen, I've got something a little different today. This segment is going to be 15 minutes, and I am so excited to introduce you to one of my colleagues, Professor Guy McCann. Wave at the people, Professor McCann. Hello, folks. <laughs> so listen, Welcome. we're going to be sharing with you. He is so full of energy, and I love it. Today, my segment for you right now is titled, The Power of the Mind. I'm just gonna jump right into it. I don't wanna waste a lot of time with a bunch of introductions. I wanna give him maximum time during this segment to talk about something that I think is absolutely fascinating. When we talk about the power of the mind, I wanna encourage you as adults, as young kids, students in the STEM programs, use your creative mind. Individuals in the area of physical sciences are using their creative mind right now to introduce some fascinating new sciences to us. So I'm gonna start it off like this. In future generations, do you imagine yourself building your house um, blueprinting your house or printing your house out? I'm going to tell you what the answer is. It's called printing your house out. Today we're going to be talking about 3D printing and the science that's moving towards this entire movement of you printing your house out. Not just going out and building it, but you print it out. And so we're going to give you a little bit of a pictorial journey today with Professor Guy McCann. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Greater Day Cafe, Professor Guy McCann. Yay! Thank you, Doctor. Good morning. So listen, this is fascinating. The the uh, ever changing world of uh, print three D printing mm -hmm. and the emerging technology mm -hmm. is a power of the mind example. It really is. When I heard you present at the college on this, I'm thinking I gotta steal you for at least 15 minutes for you to talk about it. So I know you already sent our design team, you've sent them um, images, and so we're gonna just kinda let, let you talk through this as we display the images. So you want us to go ahead and display image sure, one? Sure, if we wanna bring image one So we'll one bring up in image one. We've got our cheat sheet here. We'll bring in image one and then let you kinda guide us through. Okay. Well, the, uh, the first thing we want to understand is mm -hmm. that uh, a group of uh, architects in Amsterdam yes. uh, developed the idea that they wanted to create a whole new type of building process employing yes. 3D technology. Wow. Uh, I was invited to spend a month this summer on a faculty research chair to participate in the mm -hmm. research project. Okay. Uh, a canal house is a special type of house uh, not a house on a canal, right. but instead uh, specialized houses built in Holland where people were taxed by the height okay. of the building. And, and so that's they, a part of what they're seeing here on the screen right now. that's what they're seeing, the now. historic old city of Amsterdam. The historical city of Amsterdam, okay. And it was not bombed during the war, and so it's perfectly preserved as it was in the 1600s. You're okay. looking at buildings created in the 1600s. Wow, so these buildings have existed since the 1600s. They are still in okay. use today, 400-year-old right. buildings. Okay. But the uh, this Dutch architect team of the... Uh, Hans Heswick and uh, <laughs> yes. Martha, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, they were trying to think of a new thing to do, and they conceived, if you, as you can see in the upper uh, left-hand corner, okay. of uh, what if we could create a house with a three-dimensional printer? So to print out the house. And with so a, in that upper corner, we're looking is at... a little model that they've made of the interior of the house for design. Wow. Like you print out paper. Like you print out paper or you print out a little ornament uh, for mm. display. Mm -hmm. But as many of your people may know, the most uh, 3D printers are only about the size of a desktop. Okay. Uh, so it's very hard to print a building from... It'll right. uh, right. take a long time, okay. <laughs> uh, but if we bring up uh, slide number two... Slide number two, okay. What you'll see the Dutch have done mm -hmm. is uh, in the upper uh, left-hand corner, mm -hmm. being lifted by the crane, is a two-story tall portable 3D printer. Wow. So that is a printer up at the top of that screen that people are looking at. That's a two-story tall printer. Mm. Uh, if you look at the right-hand side, mm -hmm. you see uh, a, a small, ordinary laboratory printer that uh, okay. is nationwide standard. But if you, for scale, we have uh, people put in there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if you notice the word Kammermacher, uh -huh. in Dutch that means uh, room builder. Wow. And so their concept was that they would create a gigantic printer from scratch. Uh -huh. Understand there is 
no building material. There was, there was no companies making right. this. They self-designed it, self-engineered wow. it, and self-created it. And what they conceived of was to be able to print entire rooms in one piece at a single time. So we've just moved, you've just taken us from a little desktop printer to a huge two-story printer. So that huge two-story printer is, is now printing out rooms. Rooms. Like the room we're sitting in. Like, well, not quite that big yet. Not quite that big yet. Because it's still research science. Okay, okay I'm sorry. I you, got too excited. <laughs> yeah, I want the room. But if you look in the middle, if you look in the middle of the photograph, uh -huh. you'll see uh, a set of staircases and a window well. Uh, this is a single printed room wow. uh, that you're looking at. Right there in the middle. Right there in the middle. That's a single printed room, like you print a little toy mm. in your desk. And the printer itself can print an object seven feet wide, mm -hmm. seven feet deep, and 11 mm. feet tall. Amazing. Right? Which is, if you take a look under the printer on the left, you will see a picture of a blob of material and a human being standing there. Wow. That's how tall the objects are that we can print. Wow. So we are trying to print uh -huh. uh, entire room sections at a time. Now understand at this point, the technology is still purely research and scientific. Sure, sure. so uh, I can't do this tomorrow, per se. You can't do right. this tomorrow, and in fact, as the son of a builder, the first day uh, <laughs> I showed up to work with the architects, I was excited, okay, let's see how, we, how are we gonna co connect us to the concrete, <laughs> right. the wires, and, the right, right. and they're looking at me and they're like, guy. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, we're just making the ooze that makes the plastic material, and I'm like, yeah, I know that, but come on, how are we gonna connect it? It's like, yes. well, you know, I don't care. So they haven't gotten to e e electricity and Electricity, light. Right. we're not worried about we're that because about that. we're still trying to create, how do you do it? Just how do you the do it? The power of the mind. How do you create something wow. that never existed before? How do you create a building in three, out of three dimensional parts? See, that is the power of the mind. Uh, that is the power of the mind. To and even think that. To even conceive it. To conceive it. Okay, to conceive it and then do it. And this project is uh, so important to the world that uh, the prime minister of uh, the Netherlands and the mayor of Holland mm -hmm. uh, introduced Barack Obama uh, to this project in uh, February of 2014. Barack Obama took a special wow. trip to the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam mm. to see the prototype model uh, of this really? concept. And he didn't it, even have a press conference to tell us about no, it? No. <laughs> uh, so it's changing the world. Sure. Uh, wow. <coughs> excuse me. Amazing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, the next aspect of the uh, project mm -hmm. is to perfect a building material. Wow. Okay, okay so uh, we're going to slide three. Right, slide okay. three, if we so will. So slide three, okay. And in the, uh, per they decided to be totally unique. Okay. And design a printing material made from recycled vegetable oil. Get out of here. Okay, so they're not pouring concrete, they're not hammering nails, they're not doing two by four construction. Uh -huh. They created an idea that they would take used vegetable oil and figure out a way to make an extruded material from it. So um, we are recycling vegetable oil. 80, this, these, the images you saw in the preceding uh, slides mm -hmm. were that building material is vegetable oil. Vegetable 80 oil. 80% vegetable oil. And then the other 20%. I cannot talk we about cannot, the pro got proprietary it. aspects. Right. Got it. Uh, Secret. I'm under, uh, I got yeah, it. Yeah, I got it. You're under oil. It's, it's a gigantic uh, sure, sure. money problem. Sure, I uh, understand that. But, but it, just 80% vegetable, vegetable oil. 80% percent Being recycled to build. And to understand again the power of the mind, how big this is. We're not, we're not talking two guys in a fry pan mixing right. up some oil, all right? <laughs> right, uh, right. The mega million dollar industrial chemical mm -hmm. giant uh, Henkel in Germany mm -hmm. is partnered uh, with the, this architectural firm designing wow. and developing uh, the new material. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the next things that your viewers are probably thinking is, how much do we cost me to build this house? Sure. And the answer is, we have no idea. <laughs> right. Okay. We're just researching. We, we don't no even idea. know what it costs right now. 
They don't even know. I said, well, come on, you can tell me how much at least this wall, the previous sure. wall cost. Oh, no, because we don't even know how much the material costs. They just send it to us by, you know, whatever we ask for. It's pure research. So that's, I mean, that's how early. It's how early we are. The science is. How early wow. we are. Or as a nice example, when I was talking about we don't have integration of plumbing and anything yet, and I was talking to Hans one day at lunch, and, uh, and he was like, and yes, guy, I'm just, uh, well, think about this. What uh, mm -hmm. what happens if, if you have to break into the wall on the inside and, you know, do a repair on right. the inside of our newly... Uh, sure. And everyone needs to know that uh, this material is printed, uh, oozed at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, it's oh very, very hot as it pours out. And, uh, so, and, and it solidifies. And I was like, well, that's right, Hans. How would we uh, do something in the wall? I was, sure. Oh, I was like, oh, what'd you do? Design a new special <laughs> thing I don't know about yet? Some laser cutter? Right, right. And he's like, no, we have no idea we what we would do. We don't even know how to cut the hole because now it's like iron once right. they build it. You know? Right. Like, we're oh, still oh. working on this power of the mind <laughs> right, we're still to right. even conceive right. this idea. Those other is. people power can, can wait. Okay. So what wow. you see in this image on the left-hand side uh -huh. is the printer itself, the Kammer Macher, if, if you'll know. Notice there's wow. a uh, ladder uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, st stood on the back of it, and uh, there's a person climbing into the top of that machine. It's a machine. It's the printer. And uh, five of us can stand in the top of the building where the operating control power is. Oh, my goodness. Now, is this you in the picture we're looking at? And the picture on the right. Lucky or you. On the left, a part of me. history. Yes, yes, a part of history. Oh, I, my goodness. Wonderful. And I even got to make a good contribution. Oh. So what we see here coming down on the, with the pipe uh -huh. is a 14-foot long pipe that's carrying 400-degree recycled vegetable oil wow. and extruding it onto the floor. Where you're sitting where right I'm now. Where I'm sitting, wow. creating the first layer mm -hmm. of, an, of objects such as you see on the foreground on the right-hand side of the, the image. This is just fascinating. Uh, and again, in terms of primitive, mm -hmm. uh, or not primitive, excuse me, but in terms of pure research. Okay. Another question is, how well will this material hand up, stand up over time to mm -hmm. weather, wind, snow, uh -huh. wind, and rain? Okay. 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 And so for the last two years, uh, a majority of the project has been to put print pieces and just expose them to the weather and measure their degradation wow. and So we're change. answering that question. We're answering that. We don't that. know yet. We're, we're we answering don't know the that. question. Uh, oh we my spent goodness. Uh, one day we spent over three days just trying to fix one electrical circuit in the in the firing system to make the material flow. This is awesome. We've got about two and a half more minutes, so let's go to okay. the next slide. And, uh, if we'll go to the next slide. Okay. And, uh, so it, uh, it sums out as mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. architects have not only created an entirely new type of architecture, mm -hmm. Instead of building from the ground up, they've created building in 13 modular blocks, mm. a room at a time. What you see wow. in the middle is a single printed room. Mm. Uh, what you see on the right-hand side uh -huh. is the height of a room next to a gentleman Got who it. is standing in an exterior room. Okay. Uh, in, at the bottom, you see the modularized piece concept. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And I'm sitting on a set of stairs on the bottom left of a printed room. So these three individuals took it upon themselves to design a whole new type of architecture, wow. mm -hmm. a whole new type of engineering and design, and an entire new type of printing material to move the future forward all with the power of their mind. Power of the mind. That's what I want to encourage people about. Power of your mind. Is there one more slide that we need there to close with? There is one with? more slide. One more this slide. site that I worked on was a two-year uh, research project. They've now moved on to a newer building site. Uh, it's open for the world to see. You can uh, book uh, tours and uh, visit the Canal House Project. They're welcome to have you. And if you notice in the bottom right-hand side, mm -hmm. there's a completely printed room that you can walk in. Mm -hmm. However, that room belongs on the sixth floor of the house, so uh, they didn't quite print in order. They're the Dutch. Okay. <laughs> they have their own way. They have order. their own way. <laughs> in their okay. own way. Okay. Uh, wow. The 3D printer is coated in chromium. Mm. Uh, there's no reason to make a machine in chromium, but it's the Dutch. All right? That's, you, what, we, that's to, what they that's do. What, that's what they do. Oh my You're going to create a power idea, you've got to <laughs> right. put it in chrome. 
<laughs> right. Why? My gosh. Listen, Professor McCann, this is absolutely fascinating um, because what you're doing, first of all, I just, you know, congratulations that you have allowed yourself to be open to be um, in this moment of history. I mean, this is just fascinating. What a legacy you are just creating for those that are associated with you, your family, and so forth. And I'm going to stick myself in there as a colleague. Okay? <laughs> your colleague, you've been there. Yes, yeah, so I, I'm just really fascinated. Um, Pasco Hernando State College is fortunate to have you, and I hope that you're going to be with us for a while. And, I am. And, and just bringing these innovative concepts to the floor folks this is the power of the mind this is what we want to encourage you young people adults it really doesn't matter I'm saying young because you know our younger generation they tend to be more flexible they tend to be more open to us pushing them in these directions but to all of us um, allow yourself to be open to the creative power of your mind you've heard the cliche if you can think it you can believe it you can achieve it this is this this is what we're talking about I mean, imagine the contributions to humanity that we make when we unleash the power of our minds. And I'm going to say this because I heard you mention this before, too. You mentioned an example in one of the seminars that what if this technology was advanced enough and we had a situation like Hurricane Katrina or something like that where we could bring the printer in. I mean, this is very far in the future, but we could bring the printer in, print out these temporary houses for individuals, you know, recycle them when we're done, move on. I mean, you just shared that thought once before, and I'm gonna let you close out with a last thought because I, I saw you ready. Uh, well, that is the Dutch, the Dutch vision, is to wow. use this technology to provide stable, clean, affordable housing to refugees and uh, situations around the world. Oh my gosh. Um, but with the power of the mind, I would just like to close with uh, a quote by Dennis Gaber, the father of uh, holography, another science that changed the world. You can't predict the future, but you can invent it. Thank you, Doctor. I can't top that one. Unleash the power of your mind. If you want to hear more about our shows, go to www.drdgreaterdaycafe. That's D-R-D, Greater Day Cafe. Bye. We'll see you on the next show. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. That was fascinating. Love it. Did we do good?